Hello, this is Andy Schaefer's CAM Application Engineer with Acuity. On the screen, you're watching a full machine code simulation in NX12. Machine features such as tool center point control and tilted working planes are automatically being detected by the post processor and fed to the simulation engine. I'm going to show you all the steps required to create this project, a manifold, but first, let's finish up with the simulation. On the left side of the screen, you see my controls for the simulation. In the lower right are the actual axis positions of the machine tool, including axis limits. In the upper right of the screen, you see the machine code as it comes from the post processor and is being sent to the simulation engine to create motion. I've paused the simulation here to do an analysis. The colors are in a gradient to show me how much material is left, but I can click to take a measurement. These numbers are in millimeters, so the outside is fine, but on that inside pocket, I see I've forgotten the finish pass. Here I'm machining the pocket, which was being analyzed in the previous scene. This has been generated using our new adaptive machining algorithm. I've turned on the tool trace so I can keep track of the history of my tool movement. Next, we simulate a tool change and then full five axis machining of this small pocket. We are using tool center point control with this bull nose end mill. First, there's a pass out on the floor and then you see the finish pass on the wall of the pocket. This is a simulation of tilted working plane operations. The post automatically sees the off angle tool axis and creates the correct tilted working plane code. You're seeing some helical milling and then we're using can cycles to spot drill, drill and tap the three holes on the angled face. Here's our agenda today. We'll import the part and modify it using synchronous tools, create our blank, use our assembly commands to add device and components, We'll attach our Haas machine. We'll load tools from the library, create machining operations, create a shop floor report, map our remaining stock from OP1 to OP2, and I'll show you how to handle a revision coming from the customer. We'll start with a blank file and use the assembly tools in NX to bring in our customer model. However, we won't be applying the machining operations directly to this model we'll create an associative body for that purpose. And there are several benefits to doing this. One, we'll get back to when we do the customer revision. But for now, you'll see that we're able to make some modifications to this linked body. Here, I'm removing some very small chamfers that we prefer to do in Deber. And I also remove those two through holes. And the reason is that when I get to operation two, I need some bosses that I can use to pull this part down onto the fixture. So here you're seeing me create the profiles for those bosses. I'll just extrude them up and then I need to drop a couple of holes through. And again, we are not making these changes to the customer model. It's to our associative body. So that customer model is always there in the background for our reference. On the bottom of the part, you see a little ruler. It's an associative measurement that we'll use when we create our blank. Now we'll start at the center plane and I'm creating the profile for an extrusion to represent the shape of this billet. I freehand a rectangle and NX automatically creates dimensions representing the length, width, and position of this rectangle. Then I just double click on the dimensions and key in the numbers that I'm looking for. Here I'm setting a position dimension for the horizontal location of that rectangle. Now I return to the extent step and this is where I'm going to use that associative measurement that we started with. I certainly could just key numbers in, but by using this associative formula I can add some extra stock for cleanup and then I've got a blank length which is associated to the part. So if the customer changes the length of the part in the future, my blank will automatically update. I'll bring my vise in from a catalog of components on my hard drive. Rather than use a coordinate in space, I can just tell the vise 
how to position itself to the blank using the assembly commands in NX. Here I'm using the face of the base of the jaw and the base of the blank. Then I'll use the side of the jaw and the side of the blank. And then finally I'll use a centering command in NX that will automatically center the blank by selecting two faces on the blank and two faces on the vise. Modular tooling components are easily placed using the assembly relationships in NX. Let's have a look. I'll bring in an adapter plate and several other plates using these assembly commands. If you look carefully, you'll see that I don't need to select faces or axes off the plate that I've brought in. I only need to select from the upper plate. That's because these relationships have been pre-saved with the components. This makes it much easier to place components such as this riser. I just select the axes, the bottom face, and the side face. We'll watch that one more time with the base plate that actually mounts to the machine tool. Here's the axes and then the two faces. Very quick. Because the environments in NX are integrated, I don't need to send this assembly anywhere. I can just start configuring my manufacturing environment. So here I'm selecting my blank and my workpiece. Next I'll go to my library and search for machine tools. I'm looking for the UMC 750. I'll attach the table of this machine to the bottom center of my base plate. When the machine tool comes in, you'll see that it's not just an assembly of components. It actually has the kinematic relationships assigned to it. Because this assembly setup that I've created is now attached to the table of the machine, as I use the slider bars, I can check that this setup works within the travel limits of the machine. Now it's time to attach some tools to this project. I could create them on the fly, but I have a library with tools that I have stored for this machine. I'll search on that term and attach all the tools at one time. You can see the graphic representation of the tools in the tool changer pockets. As I move the tools, they change pockets because those are the designations for the tool numbers. Let's begin our first machining operation We'll use the face mill to take that half millimeter of stock off the top of our part. By selecting the face, NX understands where the actual boundary of our blank is and extends the toolpath so that it machines it successfully. Many shops are moving towards adaptive or volumetric machining for roughing operations. Let's see how easy this is with NX. I pick a Z depth, hit the generate button, and there's my adaptive machining toolpath. I can quickly see the result of this operation in solid form. Then I'll do a little housekeeping and hide some of the components to make visualization of future operations easy. Here I'll place another adaptive machining operation. I'll go all the way to the bottom of the part as I'm selecting here, but then I'll drop down an additional half a millimeter so the tool is slightly below my part. Then I'll place a second Z level midway up to rough a little more of that material. When we look at the results though, you see that that upper pass is aware of the in-process workpiece. It knows most of the material has been machined away, so it places only the passes necessary to actually clean up that part of the job. Here I'm working on the top of those threaded bosses inside the round cavities. NX will understand that this is a closed area and place helical lead-ins for me. For our last adaptive machining operation, we need to clean up the pocket there at the center of the manifold. And as before, this is a closed area, so we see the helical lead-in and then the adaptive machining passes out to the periphery. Now we want to do a finish pass on those vertical walls at the base of the manifold. 
we can use a filter for tangency that allows us to quickly select those faces. Then we get a profile pass with arc lead in and lead out automatically. Now we'll use a bullnose end mill to machine that horizontal face that's down at the base of the manifold. All I need to do is select that face and NX will understand that it also needs to machine the fillet and understand that it can't reach into those acute angle areas. The in-process workpiece will keep track of the remaining material. Now we'll switch to machining that angled face that's there with the three holes. We're going to rough and finish and the challenge here is the step nature of the in-process workpiece. We don't want to do any air cutting so let's check that automatically generated toolpath with a verification. We can see that it's doing an efficient job of only machining where it needs to. NX contains many different multi-axis machining options to meet different programming requirements. Here I'm using Swarf machining to do a finish pass around the outside. I'm using a bullnose end mill, so I will pick up the remaining part of that fillet at the bottom. I can quickly validate this toolpath by watching it machine against the in-process workpiece as it creates that finish pass. Now I've got a little patch there in between. I need to push the Z up so it doesn't hit that angled face. I can use an auxiliary floor to do that with my contour profile command. It's a problem with a quick solution. A quick look at the IPW reminds us that there's still material around those threaded bosses, but it's a tight fit for the tool. We need a lead in where we ramp in around the periphery of those cylinders. NX handles this without problem. Now I'll machine the small cavity on the back side of the part. The key to doing this quickly is the region selection. I pick a seed face, the bounding edges, and NX automatically finds all the surfaces in that region. I just select a tool axis, click generate, and there's my tool path. Here's a quick look at the in-process workpiece. We're well on our way to having this project complete. Let's return to multi-axis machining. We want to finish the walls of that small pocket. I'll use the contour profile command. It will let me take an extra pass out on the floor and then finish the walls. And all I need to do is pick the floor. It finds the walls automatically. That's pretty quick. But let's verify this and look at our IPW. That's what we wanted. Now I'll show you how quickly you can rough out a little acute area like this. I pick the two faces. I'm using a constant Z-level technique and I'm setting my Z-depths up so that the spacing at the bottom is tighter, giving me more material removal down there where I need it. Quick look at the IPW will validate our success here. It's time to finish that little acute area now. I'll use a four millimeter ball, but to keep that tool short, I want to tip it away from that vertical wall. I'll do that with my work coordinate system, which then lets me put a sketch on that plane. So I'm looking right down my tool as I draw this containment sketch. It makes things a lot quicker and easier. Once that sketch is complete, I can go into the machining side and choose boundary machining. Here I'll pick up that sketch as the containment. Then I'll select my tool axis, make it normal to the sketch. That's a good result. Due to symmetry, we can mirror those last two operations to the other side. The mirror command in NX even allows us to reverse direction so we can climb cut both sides. I'm finishing the floor of this pocket with a 4mm ball, but the fillet is a 1mm. I'll need to come back in with a 2mm ball and finish the periphery. The flow cut with reference tool command 
gives me a quick way to compute how much material is left and only machine the areas of this pocket that require it. When we look at the settings, we see where we call out the reference tool and the overlap. A few miscellaneous operations for finishing. Here with a ball end mill is a single pass cleanup of this fillet. Then for the four screw hole reliefs, I'm using a floor wall operation with a Z step down. And then finally, three axis milling with a ball end mill to clean up those rounds in the pocket. Here I'll machine the two chamfers and the large holes. All I need to do is select the two conical surfaces. NX will automatically recognize the feature and correctly apply the toolpath with a Z-depth offset. Feature-based machining allows us to take this one step further. NX will automatically find the whole features for me. In this case, I'm giving it two planes to say these are the directions I want to look for holes in. NX even recognizes that the three front holes are threaded. It will now automatically machine these holes, pulling tools out of the library if required. NX Cam can quickly create shop floor documentation and reports. Here I'm showing some out of the box reports like this operation list, but these can be customized. First, I'm selecting a position from which an image will be taken. Then I'm typing in some text for setup information and then creating the operation list itself. The important thing about the way NX Cam creates reports is that it's not a static image and a static report. What we're saving is the parameters or logic that the report is based on. What this means is when the programmer goes back and revises the program, the report only needs to be republished, not recreated. In this file, I'm beginning operation two, which could occur on a three-axis milling machine. So I have the part rolled over on its back. But to plan my facing operation, I need to know how much stock is there. The easy way to do that is to map the in-process workpiece, or IPW, from operation one. So I'm searching here for that workpiece in the other file. And as I hit update, we'll actually see that in-process workpiece appear on the screen. In this way, I can use my machining operations, which are aware of the IPW, and create efficient tool paths, understanding where the remaining stock is on the part. Finally, I'm going to address revisions. The situation where the customer has sent us a new file, as in this case, the green Rev B model, which as you can see is substantially different from Rev A, and in fact, it's even longer than my blank is currently. We started with an associative link early on. We'll remap this link from A to B, and we'll do so in a way where all of the faces are mapped also. In black, you see the faces that didn't change. In other words, this is a substantial revision to our part. Here, I'm showing how you can map an individual face, but that's going to take quite a while. It's much faster to use chains of tangent edges, as I'm doing here, because there's many more faces associated with those chains. And again, what we're trying to achieve is we want the internal identifiers for each of those faces to match from A to B. In this way, when we regenerate our machining operations, they'll be regenerated to the appropriate faces on the Rev B model. This is a very clean way to deal with revisions. With many CAM systems, revisions are not dealt with very gracefully. Users often end up with pieces of different revision geometry in their files. And some of the operations then are pointing back to the original revision, while other operations point to geometry from later revisions. It can become very confusing to ensure 
that the geometry being machined is the correct revision. With the technique I'm showing you, because we are remapping from the Rev A to Rev B, we will actually be able to remove the Rev A part from this file, thus ensuring that all geometry is being machined as Rev B. Here on the screen then, I'm just matching some of the final geometry and letting it infer matches from the edges I've selected. And now I get a message telling me that all geometry has been matched. I'm hiding Rev A and my linked body is now at B. Recall that we'd set up the length of the blank to be associative and we can see that that blank is also now associatively changed in length to match the new requirements. Here are my operations out of date. I'm going to regenerate these and I'm going to do it in the background so that I can continue working. At this point, the only thing that needs to be done is to re-simulate, re-output the machine code, and republish my operation list. This concludes our presentation of NXCAM. This was a brief overview of some of the capabilities of NXCAM, but there's much more to see. If you have specific questions, please contact us at Acuity. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching today.